still TVC breakfast in case you're just joining us. The Nigerian University lecturer who solved a mathematical problem of over a century and a half years old, that's about uh, 156, has described the allegation of plagiarism against him as a ploy of the West. Uh, Wei Mianok of the Federal University Oyekiti explained that his present ordeal could be seen in the light that no black man has ever won the Nobel Prize in mathematics, physics, or the sciences. The TVC News correspondent Akiogumola reports. Politician who says he has won awards locally for one of his inventions also speaks of other inventions yet to be patented. It was August 2012 with the award of the inventor for the year when I invented an iCell key holder because by that you would be able to find your lost keys, the technology by which it someone on an evil mission could be traced. And that's the truth. <laughs> We're using some mathematical um, schemes. We can't, we can't. It's very possible. A silo, a dismantable silo. I have the design here. This silo is meant for to be a safeguard, a protection for farmers, peasant farmers. On the $1 million to be won for solving the long-standing mathematics problem, Okoyemi clarified that the price money will be paid only after two years of review of a solution by the Clay Mathematical Society in the U.S. Akin Ogumola, TVC News, Adwekiti. All right, we have uh, the mathematician at Boehme Anok in the studio here, live with us. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, some of these issues that have been raised there. Uh, well, uh, glad to have you join us this morning on Good TVC morning. Breakfast. Let's begin with the fact that Riemann hypothesis is considered one of the hardest mathematical problem. Yes. Um, let me ask you how you did manage to solve it before we go into the controversies. All right. Tell us how you did manage to solve it. Oh, thank you very much. I want to start by saying that um, one needed to go beyond the starting points. Uh, before now, the starting point for the problem was November 1859. And people were working from that point. But I just needed to just take a second thought concerning it, that who could have worked on this before Riemann himself, and the person who first worked on it before Riemann happened to be Hewler. Hewler worked on the problem in the year 1739. He was the first mathematician to compute the first 100,000 prime numbers. So there was a leap from that, from his work, and that was how I got through it. All right. Give us a background of yourself. How did you uh, become a mathematician? Let's just get the background of yourself. Yeah. Thank you very much. I did not intend studying mathematics initially. I actually wanted to study electrical electronics. Um, the, the passion for mathematics was uh, surreptitiously in, the, in, my, in me, but not absolutely revealed. Uh, over time, I got admitted to the University of Illori to study electrical engineering, but I couldn't get done with my registration process before the expected time. So the test was already written in the department, and that made it impossible for me to get on with my electrical engineering. So the only option available was just to do a change of course okay. to study mathematics. And I said, well, eventually, this subconsciousness likeness for mathematics will have an opportunity to express itself. And that was how I found myself studying mathematics. So it was like uh, a stroke of, uh, I don't know whether to say luck, or providence. Well, uh, let's call it providence more. More of providence because why should it be that a student that has been offered an admission to study mathematics, I mean, electrical electric engineering, right from JAM, would eventually found himself studying mathematics. I think providence took a lead there. Yeah, took a lead there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is one of the seven, seven millennium, you know, problems in yes. maths. Yes, yes. Uh, I gather about four has been solved. Uh, is remaining about three? N not actually four. 
people making attempts on it. One has been solved, okay. concluded, and the money received. Uh, the second one, the most important one of all the problems, is this Riemann hypothesis. Yes. And it's the oldest. This is 1859. 1850, November that, right? 1859. And it's the oldest and the most important. And the importance is embedded in the thoughts, why will clay mathematics place a million dollars on this? Because if we get that soft, we'll also have some other five on soft theorems established, soft. Yeah. And the Riemann hypothesis is a key to, to locating the, the, uh, the treasures in our system, treasures, prime treasures. <laughs> treasures in what way? Yeah. Um, let me come home to narrate it more, make it more homey, uh, only with um, this, SP, uh, this depiction SP example. If you place the zeros, the solution obtained so far, on the map of the Earth, of the world, and you can do a proper calibration along the equator and the Greenwich Meridian line, you have your x and y axis. The Riemann hypothesis, instead of treating t, time, has the independent variable, which is the usual thing, the fundamental thing. Uh, in this case, is in a way treated as an independent, as a dependent variable, staying all on the y axis. Oh, the claim of Riemann was that the the solution on the x axis will always end up having a real part of one over two which is not far from the origin, the Greenwich Meridian line. So tracing it upward um, with a second solution, you get to have what we call 14.13, that's moving that measure of time towards the north, you get to a, po a point, a location of prime, prime treasure that'll be useful to learn. Oh, oh, break it down more because I, I also got some information about some things that will interest Nigerians, interest the government and all that. All right, uh, you made the key break through the year 2010. Yes. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Good. Um, which enabled you to solve the problem? What about this breakthrough? What was it about? Yeah. Um, the first thing was that um, working on that, I was able to write, to send out abroad to Aust Australia my first paper on that problem. I actually started working on it November 18th, 2008, when some of my students brought the problem to me, wanting to make money through the internet, solving problems on the internet. I sent them out of my office. So the first paper was published in 2010, and through the first paper, I was able to see the link between locating the prime numbers through that equation and also using the concept of analytical continuation. Analytical continuation means extending the ability, the ability of, of, its, of a technology beyond its present measure so that it will be able to do more than it has been able to do using another equation. For instance, your, your phone, your handset, the, the usability, the functionality can be extended if you had some other gadgets, it would do more than it can do. Okay. So that's a concept of analytical continuation. So using that concept of analytical continuation, I was able to bring up a, a high cell key order with which lost case could be found, and that was patented in America, and that was done. And people are working on that, coming into collaboration. And many other inventions kept rolling in, and I kept presenting them before now as university lectures in my universities and in some other places, in Oye Kitsi. That's, that's where you are. That's yeah. how you got the breakthrough yes. and got through this thing. All right. Yeah. Um, that's been, uh, there was an international uh, conference on mathematics and computer. Yes. Uh, I'm sure you know which held in Vienna. Yes. Sir. Uh, the, this, uh, how did it go? Well, it went all fine and well. My intention was not to attend the conference. That was not my my plan, it was not my initial plan. I, it was after I tried. I had tried three on three different occasions, and I was not getting through that I eventually settled for the one in Vienna. 
And this was what I did. I had already applied to America to come present the solution on two different occasions. On the Ryman? Uh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, I did. But I was granted the, the, the permission allowed to come attend the conference, but not this to... This particular conference? Yes. But not to present Not to the present solution. the solution in America. Okay. So the two, on, uh, two different occasions. Not to speak on that. I started asking myself, why would they allow me to come attend a conference and not allow me to do a presentation of my findings? Uh, it happened last year, and it also happened at the beginning of this year. So I had to sit down and, well, let me think smartly. But what I did eventually was to... Right, uh, sorry, I'm, yeah. uh, we'll continue definitely with this. Yeah. Don't, don't lose your line of thought, right, but right. uh, we're taking a break right now. Okay. We'll get back to this. Thank you. We'll continue. Don't, uh, we're not going away yet. But if you're watching uh, on, on TVC Entertainment, you can join us on Concert Channel 190. We'll take a break. And when we get back, the program will continue. So continue along the lines we're yes, discussing before we took that break. Thank you very much. As I was saying, my intention was to go towards the West to present a solution, but two different occasions I was denied of coming to present, but allowed to be a part of the conference. So you were in the conference? Oh, so I was. I didn't go. Oh, you didn't so go? I did not. What I did was I had to check for conferences that would be co-hosted by the American Mathematics Society outside America. And I found the one in Turkey, but because of the Shanghai visa of Ifin and because of the, the, well, the situation in Turkey, one was not allowed to go. And that was when I had to now settle down for the Vienna conference, okay. which is also, which was also on the calendar of American Mathematics Society. So winning the, using the credence of American Mathematic, Mathematics Society on, through the, the, the Vienna conference, I went and presented the solution. That was last year? This, this year? This year when? That was November 10th, November okay. 9th to 11th. Okay, just la last month? Last month, okay. yeah. So I got in there, and fortunately enough for me, I was slated to present on the 11th, and that was the exact date, the problem was marking its 156th birthday. Really? Yes. If I got to know that while I was preparing my slides in my hotel room over the night, I just thought, this problem is going to be 166, 156. 156 years exactly today. On the 11th. On the day you were presenting. The day again, was, Providence. You just said. Providence again, mm -hmm. taking the lead. And that was how I presented it. And Vienna, in their own wisdom, placed the slide, the video, on the net. I did not do that. They did. And they placed it on the net and sent the link to me about six days after the conference. So the, uh, people could go there. My former students who are now on their PhD, some of them already PhD holders, could visit the site and got the pictures. And from there, I was so surprised to hear, receive calls from BBC, CNN concerning the solution. And they kept contacting Vienna. That's Dr. Nina Ringo. Okay. You know, she, she's a, uh, she's a, a Russian trained mathematician, but from Austria. Okay. Kept contacting her, and she kept telling them the problem has been solved. Now, the good thing about it is this, that we are aware of the solution on time, is that submitting it to clay mathematics, we would still need to wait anticipatingly for two good years mm. before coming to know if it has been solved. So why must we stay in anticipation for two good years when we already have the solution with us?